Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we come tonight because we want to tell you thank you. We thank you for this day and for the blessings of this day and for how good you've been to us. Yes, Lord. You brought us through danger, seen and unseen. That's right. And for that, we are indeed grateful. You brought us out to your house one more time. Amen. You allow us to be in your presence, and we thank you for just being so good. Now we come down to this moment of preaching and proclamation. God, somebody pressed their way on tonight to hear from you. So we pray, oh God, you do as only you can do. You make preaching easy to you touch the hearts and the minds of your people that they might receive what you have for them. And we thank you in advance for somebody being saved, somebody being delivered, and yes, somebody being set free. In the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord, we do pray. Somebody say in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. If you're glad to be in the house of God on Monday night, help me give God a real big hand of praise. Right where you are. If you're just glad God brought you through another Monday, help me give God a real big hand of praise in the house of God. I want to begin on tonight by thanking my friend and my brother for um, the invitation to come back. Amen. It's one thing to be invited somewhere, it's another thing to be invited back. Amen. So either I was that bad that they had to bring me back to fix it up and clean it up again. Or I did all right. Either way, I am indeed grateful. Can you help me salute your pastor, Pastor Al, who is a jewel to the body of Christ. I enjoy being in his uh, company most of the time. I enjoy being in his company most of the time, except when we're in the car together. I don't, I don't know if you've ever rolled with your pastor. Good God Almighty. He, he drives like in a video game. I mean, he, I think he plays a game, can I catch the car in front of me? Because he, 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 Lord have mercy. But that is just another witness to the grace of God that he allowed me to get here on the night. Y'all heard him when he prayed that, right? He said, you know, the Lord took the plane up, the Lord took the plane down. Then he said, the Lord brought him from the airport to the, to the hotel. Yes, the Lord did all of that. The Lord did all of that. So for that, I am grateful. I want to thank God for you, First Fellowship, for your hospitality and allowing me to come and share with you in these three nights. Uh, it is my prayer that I say or do something that will renew you, revive you, and set you on a good spiritual foundation for the coming season ahead. I'm anxious to get to the Word of God, but I must admit that uh, in my coming here, I invited several people to come, if they could, sacrifice one night to come and share with me. And on tonight, two of those people are here. Um, you'll hear me say that I am a product primarily of three different areas. Um, born and raised in Albany, New York. I went to school in Huntsville, Alabama. And now I'm pastoring in Queens, New York. And all the way from Albany, New York, two of the finest people anywhere that have relocated here to Charlotte, uh, Deacon and Deaconess McDaniel. God bless you. Good to see you on tonight. And I thank y'all for, for being here. Thank y'all for being here. Won't you go with me um, to the Old Testament book of Genesis? Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. I hope I don't have to give you any direction on how to find Genesis. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 5. It is here on the screen, but if you are looking, I am going to read it in the King James Version. And then we'll look at it in the Amplified as well. Amen? Amen. Amen. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5, the King James Version says, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart and the Lord said I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repented me that I have made them verse 8 but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord these are the generations of Noah. Noah was just a man and perfect in his generations. And Noah did what? The text says he walked with God. Give me those same verses, would you, in the Amplified. All right, all right. 
The Lord saw that the wickedness and the depravity of man was great on the earth, and that every imagination or intent of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. The Lord regretted that he had made mankind on the earth, and he was deeply grieved in his heart. So the Lord said, I will destroy or annihilate mankind whom I have created from the surface of the earth, not only man, but the animals and the crawling things and birds of the air, because it deeply grieves me to see mankind's sin, and I regret that I have made them. But Noah found favor and grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the records of the generations, or the family history of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, one who was just and had right standing with God, blameless in his evil generation. Noah walked, lived in habitual fellowship with God. What did he do with God? He walked with God. He walked with God. On these three nights, we're going to look at this central character, a man by the name of Noah, from some interesting perspectives. Um, I think if you leave a season of renewal, a season of revival, you should not leave the season the same way you came. Are you with me on tonight? Amen. And so if you believe that, I believe that there are three things in these three nights that I need to get to you. And so on tonight, I think it's crucial that we know that you must walk with God. Tell somebody near you, say walk with God. 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 I know it sounds cliche. I know it sounds simplistic. But we must walk with God. God has called us not to be like the world, not to resemble things of the world. And so when you walk with God, it should upset the natural order of things. When That's you walk right. with God, That's you right. should not feel comfortable doing things that are not godly. Am I talking to anybody in here tonight? Yes, when you walk with God, there are certain places you should not be comfortable going. When you walk with God, there should be certain things you're not comfortable saying. When you walk with God, there should be certain behaviors that are not comfortable participating in. How many of you know that there are things that you used to do that you have no desire to do anymore? I'm not talking about that stuff you that you don't got too old to do anymore. I'm not, I'm not talking about that stuff because you take medication, you can't drink it anymore because you got certain conditions, you can't smoke it anymore. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about because since you met him, you have no desire. God has changed your appetite. Somebody shout appetite back to me. God has changed your appetite so you have no desire to do these things. The text tells us with all that was going on that Noah walked with God. God had a call on his life to be a world changer. God had a call on his life for him to do something different. And I submit to you on tonight that in these next three nights you need to understand that God has a calling on your life. He doesn't desire for you to do things the way you've been doing them. And the first step you must make in your spiritual life is you have to walk with God. Yeah. Tell somebody near you, say, you got to walk with God. Listen, let me, I'm just going to walk through the text. I realize I'm here with Pastor Al. He's got way more education than I have, so I'm not going to attempt to do anything fancy. I'm just going to walk through the text, and then I'm going to get out of your way. Is that all right? Uh, in the text, the first thing that I, I submit, in order to walk with God, you have to step out of darkness into light. Did somebody get that? You have to step out of darkness into light. In order to walk with God, the first thing you got to do, you got to step out of darkness into light. That is the first essential step in walking with God. Noah had to take this step, and it's a very big one. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. Uh, uh, verse 5 says, the Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become. Uh, the Lord, verse 6, the Lord was grieved that he had made man. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to wipe mankind out. Needless to say, Noah's generation was totally wicked. These are people that God saw. He said, I created these people and I'm sorry, I'm mad at myself. It was so bad that God literally decided, I'm going to wipe them out. I'm going to get rid of my own creation. That's right. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine that the creator is mad at the creation? 
God, God was so mad at what he had done. He said, I'm getting ready to destroy the very thing that I created. I, I, I mean, I wish I could stay here all night. Can you imagine the very thing? Listen, I need some parents to talk back to me real quick that have had some children that ain't spent all their days in church, that didn't, be, that didn't spend all their Sundays in Sunday school, that you done had some children that you had to look at and you yourself had a parent or had to wonder, where did you get that from? Listen, listen, I hope, you, I hope you're not lying tonight because I got, I got three children. I hope they're not looking at daddy talking about them. I, I got three children. I got three children. I got Cadence, I got Camden, I got Christian. I got Cadence, I got Camden, I got Christian. I got Cadence, I have Camden, I have Christian. But Camden, Camden is going to keep me in prayer. Camden is going to keep me in church. Camden is going to keep me in the altar. Camden is going to keep me going back getting oil to pray over her at night. Camden, it's a saying at my church, Camden, old Camden. I just recently baptized Camden, and I think the only reason Camden wanted to get baptized is because she was tired of her sister having communion on first Sunday, and she couldn't get it. <laughs> parents, parents, if you're willing to be real with me, uh, there is at least one child that you have birthed that you have nurtured, that you have raised, that you have given the best that you have, but some days you look at them and you wonder, who are you? The creator, text tells us, he looks at the creation and he wonders, why did I even create you? How in the world did you turn out like this? Day in, day out, Noah interacted, he lived, he dealt with a wicked generation. And so when you're dealing with wicked people, if you're honest with me on tonight, you are tempted sometimes to behave how they behave. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all real saved, y'all real sanctified. I, I need some people to be honest with me. Sometimes when you hang out with the wrong folk too long, you are tempted to participate in the activities that you know are wrong. But the Bible says that the only reason Noah kept it together is that he walked with God. Tell somebody else, tell them, you need to walk with God. You need, you need to walk with God. In the midst of this wicked generation, in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of this depraved world, God's voice still called out. God was still reaching out to the people, but Noah was the only one listening. Noah. Crazy old Noah. Noah, who still thought it was okay to be in church on a Monday night. Amen. Noah, who still thought that there was a difference between right and wrong. Yes, Noah, who still thought that there was a difference between good and evil. Yes, Noah, crazy old Noah, who took intentional, purposeful steps to walk in a different direction than everybody else was going. I, 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 I know you may not get this on tonight, but trust me, it is difficult to do things different than what everybody else is doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. When everybody else is going to party and you have to go to church, it is difficult. When, when everybody else is hanging out, but you know you got to be in when the street lights come on, it is difficult. When everybody else is having fun, but it seems like your parents want to take your fun, it is difficult. No one chose to do it differently, and it wasn't easy. It, it wasn't. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But he heard. He heard the call of God. The text tells us that he decided to walk with God. First step he took. He took a step out of darkness into light. Even even in the midst of a dark, wicked world that you and I are living in on today, we have to recognize that God is calling us out of darkness into. His marvelous light. Noah, Noah did that. Noah, Noah, Noah took that all-important step. He, he decided to step out of darkness into light. But secondly, secondly on tonight, I want to submit to you, he did something else. He took another step. Uh, tell somebody, say, he took another step. He took a step out of defiance into obedience. All right, I, I, I'm just walking through the text. He took a step out of defiance into obedience. Now, this is a major step when it comes to walking 
with God? Am, am I going to live my life God's way or am I going to bend to my natural tendency to defy God and do my own thing? And you have to recognize that we as human beings have a natural tendency to go against the rules. We, we have a natural tendency to go against the grain. We have a natural tendency to do things uh, uh, against what we're being taught. You don't believe me? Every child's first word that they learn is no. Come on, sir. I don't care. I don't care how many times you teach them yes. I don't care how many times you, you nod your head. Your child's first word that they learn is no because they learn defiance. And you can you can you can you can act like it's only children, but how many of you know we got children, some grown children in society that the first thing that they learn is defiance. And if we're going to, if we're going to, if we're going to walk with God, we have to learn how to step out of defiance yeah. into obedience. When God called Noah, when God called Noah to build the ark, Noah had a decision to make. Uh -huh. He can either compete with God yes. or he could cooperate with God. Now, he could either defy God or he could obey God. And the Bible tells us that he chose to obey God. He did everything just as God commanded him. And before you think it is easy, you need to realize that it took Noah 120 years to build the ark. I, I ain't got nobody in the house of God. I need some people that feel like you've been going through for too long. You feel like you've been doing the same old thing. You feel like you've been spinning your wheels. You feel like you take two steps forward and four steps backward. I need you to know if you ain't been doing the same thing for 120 years, you need to grab a nice cool glass of patience because God is still working on you. It took Noah 120 years to do the thing that God called him to do. How, how, how long has it taken you? How, how long is it going to take you in order to walk with God? How long is it going to take you to be obedient to God? How long is it going to take you uh, to step up to the plate that God is calling you to? How long is it going to take you for you to get off your seat of do nothing? How long is it going to take you to walk in your divine calling? How long is it going to take you till you truly trust him? Uh, there, there's, there's an old hymn that says trust and obey. For there is no other way to be happy in, in Jesus but to trust and obey. Yes, yes, I want to submit to you that in order to walk with God, we have to take a step out of defiance into obedience. We have to take a step out of darkness into his light. But, but thirdly, 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 and I may even try to get out of here on this one. We have to take a step from the world into the ark. Listen, it's right there in the text. It's right there into the text. If you go, I read chapter 6, but if you flip over chapter 7, you write this down. This will bless you when you get home. Chapter 7, then the Lord said, right in verse 1, the Lord said unto Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. I'm, I'm going to say that one more time. The, the Lord said, the Lord said, Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, then the Lord said unto Noah, go into the ark, you and your whole family, because I have found you righteous in this generation. Understand that they were only able to go into the ark after 120 years of obedience. That, that, that didn't hit like I wanted to. That, 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 that just, they just glazed over that one like that was easy. I, I said they were only able to go into a safe place, a new destination, the calling of God after 120 years of obedience. That's, I, I'm going to say that one more time. I, I need that to hit. I need that to and you, If you get this, you can go to sleep for the next two and a half minutes. Listen, listen. They were only able to go into a safe place, the place that God created for them, after 120 years of obedience. It takes us. 120 years it took Noah to build the ark. Time came for Noah and his family to say goodbye to everything and everyone they knew. They had to leave it all behind. They had to now make a new home in an ark. That's right. Now y'all, we, we read over this story, we learn this story, 
in Sunday school, we, we hear about the story in Bible study, but we just talk about it so casually. They now have to leave everything that's familiar. After building an ark for 120 years, based on the obedience of God, because God told Noah it was going to rain. And for 120 years, he's looking for rain, and there ain't a drop, there ain't a cloud in the sky. And now he has to move him and his family into an ark, based on what the word that has come to him from God. Can you imagine what he must be going through? Honey, we got to get in this ark. And it ain't even raining yet. We have to say goodbye to our home. Have to say goodbye to our friends. Have to say goodbye to our sororities and fraternities. Have to say goodbye to everything that's familiar. Have to say goodbye to all of our comforts. And it ain't even raining yet. And, and, and baby, let me tell you. This ark right here, this is our new home. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I can't imagine. Good God Almighty. If I tell my wife, honey, we get ready to leave everything that we're familiar with. And this that I've been working on for 120 years, this is our new home. But how many of you know that walking with God is not always going to be easy? I want to submit to you that walking with God is not always going to be popular. Walking with God is not always going to be the thing that everybody understands. But if you don't hear nothing else I say on tonight, you understand that there's some times that you got to walk with God that's going to cause you to walk away from the crowd. I can't, I can't get no witness in this house. I said there's going to be some times you're going to have to walk with God that you're going to have to walk away from some friendships and you're going to have to walk away from some relationships. You, you're going to be faced with some tough choices. You're going to be faced with some hard times. You're going to be faced with some difficult days. But I, I need you to know if you walk with God, you, you won't be making a mistake. If you walk with God, you won't be taking a wrong step. If you walk with God, you won't be making a bad decision. If you walk with God, you won't be making a bad choice. And this, and this is where I was trying to get to all night and I'm getting ready to get all out of here. Let me tell you something. Because the key to understanding this whole thing is if you walk with God, God will walk with you. Good God Almighty. I'm, I'm done. I'm ready to get out of here on tonight. I need you to tell somebody in your section say if you walk with God, God will walk with you. That, 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 that's the wrong person because they still sit down. They ain't praising God. They ain't shouting yet. They waiting for the preacher to say something else. I need you to know if you walk with God, he'll walk with you. And I need some old sanctified church folk to help me say he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own. And the joy that we share can never compare. Beloved, you need to understand on tonight that the key is just not you walking with God. But the key is the whole thing is that if you walk with him, he'll walk with you. There's been some times I felt like in my life I couldn't walk. But when you walk with God, how many of you know some nights he'll carry you? Some nights he'll drag you. Some nights he'll pull you to where you need to be. If you take that all important step, Step out of darkness into the marvelous light. Step out of defiance into obedience. Step out of your place of comfort into your place of safety. If you walk with him, he'll walk with you on tonight. He'll walk with you on tonight. Father, I thank you. I thank you for your word on tonight. I thank you for your word on tonight. And I thank you for somebody that needs to take a step from a place of familiarity to a place that you're calling them to be. Amen. I thank you for this word that tells us we have to walk with you mm -hmm. even when it don't feel good. That's right. Even when everybody else is questioning us, even when everybody else has turned and walked away, we, we need to know all tonight. That's right. We truly desire mm -hmm. this next season of God yes. that we have to walk with you. Thank you for your word all tonight. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Somebody help me celebrate the Lord real quick and give God a real big hand.